Welcome back to The Daily Beat. Thank you so much for staying with us. Alongside the staggering death toll in Syria, history is paying a major price for the fighting in the country. Artifacts thousands of years old, destroyed by the Islamic State in the ancient city of Palmyra. But not all were destroyed. As uh, Maya Margit explains, some are ending up in European and U.S. markets. The ancient city of Palmyra in Syria once teeming with cultural treasures, now stripped of its unique relics and almost entirely demolished after it was seized by the Islamic State group last year. The jihadists not only rely on smuggling oil for income, but also on the lucrative antiquities market. According to a report by Russian investigators, IS earned nearly $200 million last year from the illicit trade of cultural goods coming from Palmyra. After the Syrian army, backed by Russian forces, liberated the World Heritage Site at the end of March, experts moved in to assess the damage. We discovered that there was, uh, especially in Syria, a very well-organized system with permits of excavations delivered to local people. So uh, these local people are paying some uh, uh, permits to excavate and the money goes directly in the pocket of the uh, terrorists. As plans to restore the ancient city come into focus, thousands of priceless artifacts have begun to turn up in antique markets in the United States and Eastern Europe. So how are these unique relics smuggled out of Syria, and where do they go from there? Most of them wind up here, in the Turkish city of Gaziantep, considered to be a hub for the sale of cultural goods looted in the war-torn neighboring country. In a letter released last week, UN Russian envoy Vitaly Cherkin described how they are traded. The stolen goods are sold at illegal auctions and then through a network of antique shops and at the local market. The looted artifacts then make their way to various Turkish cities, where they are later sold at auction. Russia Today reports that smugglers use online auction sites to mask the ID and IP address of the original seller, thereby protecting terrorist networks. We think that for the moment all these pieces are in the process of being laundered uh, in the black market, in free ports, in free zones, uh, at the border of uh, Turkey and Syria, um, and in uh, private uh, hands. So this is why we think that these objects are going to appear on the open market in the next 10 or 20 years. According to the report, nearly 100,000 cultural sites are currently under IS rule nine of which are listed as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And it's a thriving black market. The illicit sale of cultural goods is valued between three to six billion dollars annually, UNESCO says. In Europe, nearly a million stolen goods were seized over the past four decades. And that's just Europe. In the Middle East, racked by war and terrorism, the massive pillaging of museums and archeological sites in Iraq and Syria are providing economic fuel for jihadists across the region. Maya Margit is joining me now in the studio. Hi, Maya. Thanks for, for coming in. Thank now, you. you spoke to UNESCO, as we've seen. Are they aware uh, 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 of, of, of the situation? Are they, do they know if these artifacts are being sold in auction houses around the world? Well, they said that they've been in contact with auction houses across the world, basically, the major ones, Sotheby's, Christie's, the really reputable ones. And these auction houses have told them that they have not received any objects or items that could be linked to Palmyra. Of course, the issue is that provenance can be easily forged, and that's what these, these terror networks are doing. Apparently, they're very well established in Syria and Iraq, the antiquities segment of mm -hmm. the terror network, and they're basically uh, forging these papers and selling them in, in Turkey first or in Lebanon first, and then these are from Turkey and Lebanon, they make their way across the world. Right, and serve as a source of income. They're a huge source of income. This is not just a small market. This is a huge multi-billion dollar market. They can't even estimate the amount of money that's being, the amount of uh, objects that are being sold and what the value is, monetarily yeah. speaking. Yeah. But it's so big that it's fueling terror groups and it's giving them, besides oil, they're making money from this. Yeah, from and antiquities. what kind of laws are, are in place to prevent this? The biggest law is the 1970 Convention Against the Transfer of Illicit Cultural Property. It's a UN convention and it's considered to be the most uh, 
uh, expansive agreement on the issue. Mm -hmm. And basically what it does is it set up like a set of laws for countries around the world to follow so that they can keep an inventory of all their cultural goods. They have to have certificates to export any kind of artwork or archaeological artifact. They can't just export whatever they want. And there are also punishments. There are penal sanctions on countries that don't follow these rules. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, speaking of all these cultural goods, goods we've, we've seen the IS uh, really wreak havoc in, in the region. Um, what's the latest on, on restoration efforts? Well, UNESCO just sent a delegation actually a few days ago. And now, right now they're trying to assess the damage and determine how much of the artifacts were actually stolen and sent away. Mm -hmm. um, right now they're saying that they need international help. They need help from other countries to restore Palmyra because it's a major World Heritage Site. It's, it's very well known. Yeah. And they adopted a Russian resolution as well to help build a fund. Well, we uh, certainly wish them luck with that. We've seen the pictures. It's uh, quite painful what's going on there. Uh, Maya, thanks so much. Thank you.